At 3 a.m., Italy's Phlegraean fields trembled with more than 200 earthquakes in just a few hours, an alarm scientists have dreaded for decades. Deep below Naples, the ground is rising, toxic gases are spiking, and officials now warn the risk is escalating fast. What does it take for a supervolcano to tip over the edge, and how close are we to global consequences? On-call seismologists at Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology watched their screens as the seismic catalog filled with new entries at an unprecedented rate. In a span of just a few hours, more than 200 earthquakes were recorded beneath the heart of Campi Flegrei. The largest, a magnitude 3.2 event, rattled the district of Pozzuoli, sending a clear signal that the caldera was under stress. Most of these quakes clustered at shallow depths, less than 4 kilometers below the surface, well within reach of the densely populated neighborhoods above. The official hourly log showed bursts of activity, sometimes dozens of tremors within a single hour, with epicenters tracing a ring beneath the city and its outlying suburbs. Residents reported shaking strong enough to wake them from sleep, and local authorities received a surge of calls about cracked walls and fallen plaster. While previous swarms have come and gone, the sheer number and concentration of these latest events set them apart. The real-time dashboard at Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology tracked the evolving swarm, with each event plotted in red, painting a dense halo of seismicity beneath the historic city center. For the scientists monitoring the crisis, these numbers were not just statistics. They were the first hard evidence that the volcano's internal pressure was mounting once again. The question now was what this restless ground might do next. The ground beneath Pozzuoli and the surrounding caldera has not been still. Over the past decade, satellite and GPS data have traced a steady, sometimes accelerating rise, totaling about 1.4 meters since 2005. In recent months, the pace has quickened even further. Instruments now record uplift rates exceeding 15 millimeters per month, with short bursts spiking to over 1 millimeter per day. This phenomenon, known locally as Bradyseaism, is more than a slow swelling of the Earth. It is the visible sign of pressure building deep below, where water, steam, and volcanic gases accumulate in a buried reservoir trapped beneath hardened layers of rock. As the pressure mounts, the ground arches upward. The process is not smooth or uniform. Some neighborhoods in Pozzuoli, Bagnoli, and Forigrada are rising faster than others, causing roads to buckle and cracks to appear in walls and pavements. Scientists use GNSS and INSAR satellite measurements to map these changes in real time, watching as the uplift zone shifts and expands. Each pulse of ground movement often lines up with bursts of earthquake activity, hinting at a cycle. Pressure builds, the caprock fractures, seismic swarms release some of the strain, and then the system resets, ready for the next episode. Geophysicists compare this to an overfilled balloon, where the crust flexes under mounting force until it gives way sometimes suddenly. The current acceleration in uplift is among the fastest since the 1980s, a period that forced mass evacuations and left a lasting mark on the city. For researchers, these measurements are not just numbers. They are the heartbeat of a restless caldera. Watch closely for any sign that the pressure might soon find a new path to the surface. Gas monitoring stations at Solfatara and Pisciarelli have tracked a steady, sometimes elevated release of volcanic gases, mainly carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, across recent months. Telemetry logs show these emissions trending upward during periods of increased seismicity and uplift, but not in dramatic spikes. Instead, the data reveal a persistent, elevated background of degassing, consistent with a caldera under long-term pressure. Researchers at INGV and collaborating universities have scrutinized these gas trends, searching for patterns that might distinguish between hydrothermal overpressure and fresh magma intrusion. The ratios of carbon dioxide to sulfur dioxide, along with stable isotopic signatures, remain in line with a pressurized hydrothermal system rather than a sudden influx of deep magmatic gas. This interpretation finds further support in laboratory experiments designed to mimic Campi Flegri's buried reservoir. Scientists use so-called mocha pot setups, sealed chambers filled with water and minerals, heated until pressure forces gas and steam through simulated caprock.
These tests replicate the burst-like cycles seen in the field. Slow pressure buildup, abrupt fracture, a pulse of gas release, then rapid resealing as minerals precipitate in the cracks. The match between laboratory cycles and field data is striking. Episodes of uplift in shallow seismic swarms coincide with periods of enhanced gas flux, but without the chemical fingerprint of magma rising toward the surface. The evidence points to a system where hydrothermal fluids, not molten rock, drive the current unrest, pressurizing the caldera until the caprock yields, then resetting as the system heals. This chemical and experimental proof adds a crucial layer to the physical signals already tracked by satellites and seismometers. Hazard assessments for Campy Flagrite draw a clear line between what is probable and what remains remote. The most likely scenario, according to the Italian National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology and Italy's Civil Protection Agency, is continued unrest, persistent ground uplift, frequent shallow earthquakes, and minor infrastructure damage. These patterns have played out repeatedly since the 1950s, with the crisis from 1982 to 1984, forcing the evacuation of 40,000 residents but never progressing to a full eruption. Current risk models place the probability of ongoing Brady seismic activity at the highest tier, meaning residents should expect more tremors, ground movement, and the possibility of additional cracks in buildings or roads. Moderate hazards include the chance of damaging earthquakes up to magnitude 5, especially given the newly mapped ring faults beneath Pozzuoli. While such events are not guaranteed, the clustering of seismicity along these faults raises the risk for older structures and dense neighborhoods. Hydrothermal explosions, sudden steam-driven blasts, are also rated as moderate to high risk, particularly near Solfatara and Pisciarelli, where gas and water pressures can surge without warning. A true magmatic eruption, like the one that formed Monte Nuovo in 1538, remains a low-probability event. The largest caldera-forming eruptions, catastrophic on a regional scale, are considered extremely unlikely in the present cycle. With over 360,000 people living inside the caldera, exposure maps highlight Pozzuoli, Bagnoli, and Foragrada as the most vulnerable zones. For these communities, understanding the most probable hazards is the first step toward informed readiness, rather than reacting to distant catastrophic scenarios. Protezione Civile, Italy's National Civil Protection Agency, stands at the center of Campi Flegre's emergency planning. Their updated evacuation blueprint divides the region into hazard zones, prioritizing the densely populated red zone, Pozzuoli, Bagnoli, and parts of western Naples, where up to half a million people may need to move quickly if volcanic alerts escalate. Every neighborhood has a mapped route out. Main roads like the Tangenziale and coastal highways, plus regional rail lines serve as lifelines during an evacuation. But recent drills have exposed real-world bottlenecks. Pozzuoli's historic center, with its narrow streets and the key exits from Bagnoli and the Naples Ring Road, remain choke points even in practice runs. To manage this, departures are staggered by district, with signage and police directing traffic, and one-way flows on outbound lanes during a real event. Assembly points such as stadiums, parking lots, and public squares are assigned for each community. Here, evacuees board buses or trains to reach safer areas outside the caldera. Volunteers assist the elderly and those with special needs, and registration is confirmed with national identification and text messages. Residents receive automated text alerts with a go-bag checklist, identification documents, medicines, water, food, a phone charger, cash, and basic clothing. The same instructions are printed in brochures and distributed during preparedness campaigns. Pets are to be leashed or crated. In the last major drill, over 95% of households in the red zone received these text messages, but feedback highlighted the need for clearer signage and more shelter space. Protezione Seville stresses that evacuation orders will only come from official channels, coordinated with ING monitoring thresholds. Residents are urged not to rely on social media rumors and to keep their go-bags ready, knowing that the window for safe evacuation depends on swift, orderly action. Inside the monitoring room of Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology INGV, a new generation of tools is reshaping how scientists watch Campi Flegrei's restless ground.
Over the past three years, a deep learning artificial intelligence system has been trained to scan raw seismic waveforms from dozens of stations around the caldera. The result is a seismic catalog that now holds more than 54,000 detected events, over four times as many as the conventional manually reviewed logs. This breakthrough lets volcanologists see not just the strongest quakes, but also the faint tremors that sketch out the hidden geometry of the volcano's faults. One of the most important discoveries is a ring-shaped fault system encircling the uplift zone beneath Pozzuoli. The system's fine-grained event mapping shows how earthquakes cluster along this buried ring, matching the boundaries traced by satellite deformation maps and marine seismic surveys. The pattern is unmistakable. The caldera's stress is concentrating along these ancient fractures, raising the stakes for local hazard models. With every new event, the catalog updates in near real time feeding into integrated dashboards that combine seismic, GPS, satellite, and gas sensor data. This allows the INGV team to refine hazard maps and update risk assessments with unprecedented speed and precision. Volcanologists and data scientists work side by side, reviewing alerts and debating how best to communicate changes to civil protection officials and the public. As the technology advances, the message from Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology remains clear. Follow only official updates and be ready to act on authoritative guidance. In a landscape shaped by hidden faults and sudden bursts of unrest, the most reliable defense is timely, science-based information. Today, more than one million people live within reach of Campi Flegre's power. As the ground stirs beneath Naples, vigilance is not optional. It is survival. Nature's timeline is uncertain, but the urgency to prepare is real. The next warning may not come with time to respond. Stay alert.